Today I want to show you a super simple and easy way you can pick the right ND filter for your DJI Mini 3 or your Mini 2 or pretty much any drone. Hey, my name is Jake and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. So I test and review lots of drones, cameras, lenses, filmmaking equipment here in Alaska. And I give you tips and tutorials on how to use them so you can tell better stories. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing. Today I want to show you a really easy way that you can pick the right ND filter for your drone and then pretty much be good. And this works with pretty much any drone. It's just a way to figure out which ND filter you need to use based on the conditions you're flying in. The easiest way to find the right ND filter is set your settings for the drone for what you want them. Now I'll explain a little bit more about this later on, but really what you want is your shutter speed should be two times your frame rate. So if you're filming in 4K 30, you want your shutter speed at one over 60. And then you want to keep your ISO as low as possible, especially on smaller drones and smaller sensors, the lower ISO is best. So set your ISO at 100. And then we're going to see what sort of ND filter we need from there. So this is the right shutter speed for what you want to do, but obviously it's way too bright. So what we're going to do is just grab an ND filter and put it on there and see what sort of difference it makes. Now this is the ND16. And obviously it's, it's probably not going to be strong enough, but we'll start with this and see how that looks. So, all right, obviously already you can see that it's better, but it's still not where we want it. So now we're gonna go stronger and pretty much honestly, I think it's gonna be an ND64. So here we have the ND64, I'm gonna put it on and you see that it's pretty good. Now it's still a little bright, but we can always move the shutter speed up just a little bit to like one over 80 or something like that. So we'll move this up to one over 80 Yeah, maybe one over 100. So it's not perfect, but I don't have anything stronger than an ND64. I mean, I have an ND1000, that would be way too dark for this. But you can see here that in bright light, in this case, even with a little bit of clouds, an ND64 is pretty much necessary. Now some clouds have moved in, so the lighting has changed pretty dramatically from what we were filming in before. And you can see here, the ND64 is way too dark. So there's two things we could do. We can either raise the ISO like that, and get the proper exposure for the footage that we want to get. But the problem is with small drones, pretty much any drone, as soon as you start raising the ISO very far, you get a lot more noise. So it's better to take the ND filter off and put on one that's a little less strong. And again, we're going to do the same thing we did before, which is basically set our settings where we want them and then see which ND filter is going to be right. And as you do this more and more, you'll get a feeling for the kind of lighting that you're in and the strength ND filter you want to use. Plus at the end of the video, I'll give you some general guidelines for what ND filter will be good for what types of conditions. So here I went down to an ND8, but that wasn't quite dark enough because as soon as you start looking at the sky, it's actually still kind of bright up with all the clouds diffusing the light. So I ended up with an ND16 and that might be a tiny bit dark, but it does give me some leeway to be able to raise the ISO to 200 and still be fine or to be able to bump the shutter speed to maybe one over 80 and still be fine. So it gives me a little bit of leeway to either side. Now that I've shown you a couple different situations of picking the right ND filter for whatever situation you're filming in, I wanna tell you why you need to set your settings up on the drone the way I've showed you. And let's start with the ISO. ISO at 100 basically gives you the cleanest picture quality possible. It means there's no noise. The higher you go in ISO, especially when you start hitting 400, 800, 1600 definitely, the image starts to fall apart and you get a lot of noise. Now on these drones, you can definitely split the difference and stick around ISO 100 to 200, that's no problem. So if your ND filter is a little dark, it's not a big deal to just bump your ISO up to 200. But you want to keep it as low as possible as a rule of thumb. And then we come to shutter speed. And this has been hotly debated in my comments recently, but basically what we're trying to do is match the natural motion blur that your eyes see when you move something fast in front of your face. So if you shake your hand like that, you'll see your fingers sort of blur together. We want to match that as closely as possible with our cameras, our drones, so that it doesn't make our brains kind of try and figure out what's going on. And that will lead to a stuttery, uh, sort of weird feeling image where it feels jittery and stuttery as you can see here. When we pause it, obviously everything in the frame is very sharp and very much like an individual photo was taken for every single frame. And that's what gives you that jittery, stuttery feeling. But if you put on the proper settings, like I've showed you where your shutter speed is two times your frame rate and your ISO is nice and low at 100 or 200, and then you run through, you can see here, everything when we pause it is a little bit blurred where it's moving fast. So everything toward the edges of the frame is a little blurry. The center's still nice and sharp because that's something we're flying toward, 
but everything else that's in motion is blurry. And that's what matches what our eyes see naturally in the world. And that's why we want to match it. That's why we're always telling you and me and many others who are doing ND filter reviews or talking about ND filters are telling you, put your shutter speed at two times your frame rate to get that proper looking motion blur. Another question I get asked a lot is what about polarized filters? When do you use polarized filters? And polarized filters are really useful in photography if you want to get rid of or cut the glare off surfaces of water like this but they're also useful for controlling how much saturation you have in the blue in the sky or the green coming from trees and other vegetation. So as you can see here, without a polarized filter, there's a lot of reflection on the water and it really sort of, I mean, it's not bad. It just looks like really a very highly reflective surface. But then if we put on a polarized filter and polarize it correctly where it's oriented toward the sun and this takes just a little bit of time to play with, you basically line the drone up the direction you're going to fly and rotate the filter until you see the picture change the way you want it to look when you're flying that direction. But now that we've got a polarized filter on there, you can see that there's way less reflection on the water. And also if you look in the blue parts of the sky, you can see that that sky looks a little bit more blue and a little bit more saturated than it did without the polarizing filter. Guidelines for ND filters are pretty simple and pretty basic. You wanna use ND32 to ND64 in bright conditions. So sunlit days, snow, filming over bright surfaces, anything like that, ND32 or ND64 is what you're gonna to wanna to use. ND64 pretty much on the Mini 3 because it has such a large aperture. When it's cloudy or overcast, that's when you're gonna to wanna to use ND8 to ND16, somewhere in there. It depends on how cloudy it is. If it's really dark and overcast, like stormy, ND8 probably. If it's not, then ND16. ND4 is something you're gonna to wanna to use if you're filming things like sunsets, because you do need some ND filter, but you don't want a lot of ND filter, especially if you're gonna be up there while the sun is actually setting. ND4 is pretty much the sweet spot for anything just before and just after sunrise and just before and just after sunset. Now, if you have questions, ask me in the comments. But next, you need to check out this video so you can learn the seven drone moves that me and other professionals use on pretty much every shoot. I'll see you over there.